there and welcome back to Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny and in this episode you'll learn how to add text to your photos in Photoshop Elements. Since the very beginning of running this series, this is the lesson that I had in mind. I wanted to teach bloggers how to add text to their photos and create really Pinterest worthy photos to help you increase the traffic to your blog. So the last four or five lessons here in this series are going to be focused all on how to make your pictures really pop so that they'll have maximum impact on Pinterest and hopefully get you not only new visitors to your site, but also new subscribers. So let's dig in. I have here a photo of my favorite little buddy, Sam. This is my six year old and he's having a great time on our trampoline. Um, not that it's a stellar photo, but I obviously needed something to be able to show you how to add text to photos. So, why not? At least something fun. When you get to this point with your photos, you want to make sure that you've done all of the preceding steps as far as editing, adjusting levels, cropping to where you want it, sharpening your photos. All of that needs to be finished and I would actually save that out as a separate file with no text on it first. Your perfected picture exactly how you want it. And then what I would do is open the picture back up in Photoshop Elements in order to add the text later. It's always nice to have an original copy that looks great without words on it because, let's face it, words aren't going to look great in your family photo album. So, the simplest way to add text to your photos is just to go over here on the left hand side to the big T and that is your type tool. And then up at the top of the screen you will have your different options for what typeface you're going to use or font what um, what style, whether it's regular, italic, um, bold, and then what size the font is going to be once it's on your screen. So I like to go ahead and pick this, even if you don't really know which font you're going to be using, probably 250 point is going to be way too big for a photo. So I'm going to knock this down to about 48 for right now. And we'll just click on our photo and start typing. So I'm going to go down here and click how to have a fun kid. In order to finalize what I just did here and get it to where I can start making adjustments to this text, I'm going to go to the right hand side here and click on the name of the layer. That gets the cursor off and now this is an object. It's its own layer within my document here. So if I were to go back here and click here, if I click back on that text again, that's how I can open it back up. And if I need to do something like capitalize these or whatever. So obviously this text here is doing absolutely nothing for my photo. First of all, it's a really bad typeface for this. And second of all, it's tiny. Third of all, you can't read it because of the color. So we're going to make adjustments to all of those things here. The first thing I'm going to do here is resize this type so that I can read it better. And the easiest way to do that is just to hover over the top right hand corner here. And as long as you're in the, the corner, in elements anyway, it will keep the same aspect ratio of the text so you won't get any distorted text. And once you resize this, you're going to have to hit the check mark to commit that change. So now we have a new size for this. And the next thing I'm going to work on is the typeface. Right now this is not a very good looking font. It is kind of decorative. It's more of a display type font and that's just not going to cut it in this fun, carefree kind of picture. So I'm going to go ahead and select my type tool again. And this time I can just triple click on it to select all of it or I could have um, dra drug and highlighted the whole thing to select. And now you'll see that back up at the top I have my options pane again. So right now this is in Academy engraved and this is a fun little shortcut. I'm, I'm just going to start at the top here and kind of scroll down. And as I hit my down arrow while I have the cursor in this font family box, it's going to change what the font is here on the picture. So we can watch it. And if you're just getting started and you're not very familiar with all the different typefaces you have on your computer, I would suggest doing this method and just kind of scrolling through and finding one that you like. So I am going to choose one that I know and love called Bebas New. And that is a free font. I think you can get it on Font Squirrel. And 
it's just a really fun one for bold headlines. So now I have this and I think I want to change this. I'm going to up the size to, I'll have to type it in here. Let's do mm, 120 and enter. So here's an option. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to click my cursor back here on the font size. And if I use my up arrow, you'll see those numbers change just incrementally, very, very, in a very, very small way. Um, and you can up and down arrow toggle until you get it the size that you want it. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on the name of this layer, how to have a fun kit. And I pushed V to select my move tool. And here we go. I can just place this right here. And sometimes when you're adding text here, you might not want to add it straight onto the photo. You'll see that this really, it blends in in a weird way. It's not really a good layout. But what I can do is a nice little trick where I'm going to add a little field, maybe a rectangle behind it to set it out as text. So in order to do that, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll do that by going over here to my little um, sticky note looking button and create a new one. And I'm going to move that, drag it and drop it below the layer where my text is. And now I'm going to go over here and get my rectangle tool. And it's white. Whatever the foreground color here is, is what it's going to output for you. So white is just fine with me. And I'm going to take it and just drag and just like this. Now I have a white rectangle behind it. That still looks a little bit crazy. So um, I just pushed V to get my move tool back and you can see I can toggle it up and down with arrows to reposition it. Now what I'd like to do is lower the opacity of this so that it really blends in with the background a little bit. So again with that shape selected I'm going to turn my opacity down pretty far actually. Let's see, let's see how it looks at 40%. And at 40%, here we go. Now you can see a little bit of the background through that rectangle, but it still is framed in a nice way. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight both of these layers, holding down shift to select both of them. And I'll just toggle down until I have it exactly where I want it. And obviously this is not going on my blog, so I'm not going to get nitpicky. This is the first method of putting text into a photo. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and erase both of those. Yes, I do want to erase them. I'm just holding them and clicking delete. I just selected those and then deleted each one. So for the second style I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just keep give us new right now. And I am going to bump it up to, I think 200 is fine. With my type tool selected, I'll go ahead and click here. And I will do the same type thing, but I'm going to have this much bigger. Um, I pushed Command and A to select all of that text, or I could have drag and select. And now I'm going to bump up the size. Let's try 250 and see how big that is. Let's try 350. Okay, this is getting more in the range that I was looking for. So I'm going to click on that layer and now I'm going to push V to grab my move tool and I'm actually going to drag it down here just a little bit. This is a different style. Obviously you don't have to do, you know, this for your photos, but it's another option. I'm going to go back to my type tool and type my second line here. Uh, uh, and we'll do a third one, fun kid as the third one. And now I can go back here and grab my move tool and line these up just how I want it. Let's see. And I will probably make this one a little bit larger. And you probably don't want to do a whole lot of resizing of text once it's already typed out because the way Elements works is it's a raster image, which means it's made up of tiny little pixels. And if you blow up something too big that used to be a smaller size, then it's going to get all pixelated and crazy looking. So the best thing to do is try to find that size you're looking for specifically on Elements 
before you do the typing or else while you have the text selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the opacity of this as well. In elements 10, I can only do this one layer at a time, but I'm going to turn down the opacity of each layer so that we're gonna have the, the background kind of peeking through here again as well. So on Fun Kid, I'll turn that down to, let's see. You still want it to be readable. Probably 66% looks fine. And I'll type this in here and 66%. So this looks great. And I might, if this was going to be from my blog, I'd probably crop it so things lined up a little bit better. Um, I'm not going to spend that much time on this photo. But so here's another option. Um, and actually that's covering up his face. So I would turn that one down even more so you can see him through it. How to have a fun kit. So there's option number two for how to lay text out. I'll go ahead and erase all of these. And for my third one, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these, yes. For the third variation I'm gonna give you here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's something that's pretty popular, um, specifically with this font right now on, um, on Pinterest. I will, I'm gonna create another rectangle here and I wanna make sure that I have a new layer for this one. And I will just drag the rectangle here. We're gonna make a whole field on the bottom to put our text in. And I'll go ahead and bump the opacity of that one back down quite a bit. Let's see, maybe 50%. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add some text here that I will do in a fancier typeface. So back on my type tool, and let me scroll down. I'm gonna scroll down here and grab Sacramento, which is a Google font. You can download that from Google Web Fonts. And I'll go ahead and type here in this box. Oops. And don't forget, I had it starting on 350 pixels. I definitely do not need it that big for what I'm gonna do here. So I'll turn that down some. And this time, instead of just clicking once, I'm going to click and drag a box. And what this is going to do is give a text outline box that will, that will be the bounds where all of my text is gonna stay inside of this box. So I'm gonna click and drag that. And when I let go, you'll see that the cursor appears here inside the box. So here's what I'll do. I put, um, 20 reasons, oops, and that was still in white, so I need to go ahead and change this by clicking on my foreground color. And I'll go ahead and choose black and say 20 reasons I love staying home with my kids. And I'm gonna highlight all of this and I'll go ahead and start turning up the font size to see how big I want it to be. And I can just do the same kind of text formatting as you would do even in Microsoft Word. 20 reasons I love staying home with my kids. I'll select all of this and maybe I want to center my text here. There we go, so now it's centered inside the box and I'll click on the name of the layer. Now that does not have to stay like it is um, as far as the position of it, right now it's up the top. If I go back to my move tool and I have that layer selected, I'm simply going to be able to drag this into place where I want it. So this is um, the third and final method of adding text to your photos that I'm gonna cover here today. And hopefully it's gonna give you a lot of different ideas when you think about your blog and your audience and your photos Think about ways that you can incorporate text in there to make a great, grabbable, pinnable image that's gonna make a lot of people from Pinterest wanna pop by and come check out your blog. So in this lesson, we learned how to add text to our photos in Photoshop Elements. Your assignment for today is to find an upcoming blog post that needs a good Pinterest-worthy title and to add text. Play around with all different kinds of ways of arranging shapes and putting those with text, maybe changing the opacity like we did, working on color, and just see what you can come up with. 
And if you decide to use any of those in your blog post, please leave me a link in the comments. I would love to come by and check out your awesome work. Next time on Photoshop Elements for Bloggers, we will be watermarking your photos. So stay tuned. I'm Jenny Elliott. Thanks for watching.